Can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And being that this is Veterans Day, I'd like to say to everyone um, that we thank you for your support. And uh, I'm not sure people here who are in the veterans, but for anybody who's watching, we uh, appreciate the support that you've given us. Thank you. The minutes of the last meeting. I move we accept the minutes of the last meeting. Second. All approved. Okay, those are approved. Consider um, the minutes of the meetings. We need to decide whether we want to post them on to the website or not. Uh, we've been sending them to Jennifer, and she said we hadn't posted them in the past, but it was up to the Board of Selectmen of whether they would like to have them posted or not. Okay. So. Um. Doesn't, do you guys have a, a drop down menu for a committee, road committee? On, I don't picture you having a. No. Drop. No, she doesn't. Okay. So maybe adding something? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we changed the format a little bit. Um, in the past, we had talked about old business, new business, and bouncing back and forth between roads and bridges and culverts. And what we did was we just added it all so that we can talk about all items concerning roads at one, one time. Uh, rather than going back and forth. So um, the first things that we had talked about in the past were uh, Hopper Road dip, and the question was should we hold that until 2019, but we've seen that that has been repaired. Mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming Dave did that. Uh, Dave Langley did Dave that. Langley. Okay. Yeah. Good job. I got calls from my old neighbors. They're happy. A lot of people are, yeah. Yeah. That was David. Langley and uh, Robert Ham and Will Cole. It's great. A flat ground road. We're waiting to get a second quote. Um, I think Dave Langley was going to try to get that so we don't get on the same boat. I've got a little information at if you want me to speak on sure, it. Sure, if you have something. Have you gotten any more bills on it other than. No. no. Okay. So we're at about 25000 right now with the vendor and the um, stuff that Dave Winchell initially sent in. Yes. It's around 25. And there's no more invoices at this point? As far as I know, no. We have not okay. seen and any. We have the Scott's estimate of about $9,000. Okay. Um, on the flat ground road, um, anybody's been down there, the very beginning of the road, there's probably 100, 150 feet of road that uh, they didn't do when they started the road. And from where they stopped to go to Mrs. Snyder's driveway, it's 1,017 feet. So there's 12, 1,200 feet probably still left to do. And uh, they're going to be done hopefully this week hauling uh, logs out of there and chips um, and like I, I said at the previous Sletman's meeting you know there's some pretty good craters up there now and uh, so that's that's where that is just so you have an idea what there is left to do there initially was was there two culverts put in or three they, they put in three three culverts that were installed yeah there were 40 foot Velvets. And when they when they completed that, um, sure you drove down the road. Did, was the, the ditching done all, all the way down to twelve hundred feet on both sides? No, they they only ditched. Uh, there's about a thousand feet left. So they only did a couple hundred feet. Well, there's a thousand. There's about a thousand feet that they didn't ditch. Okay, so it's it's but it's twelve hundred from the beginning of the road to no, it's no, no, no. A mile. It, oh, it's, it's a half a mile. It's, it's twenty eight hundred altogether. Yeah. And he only did a couple hundred. No, he ditched. Uh, it was it was twenty eight 
would have been about 2,000. It's, it's pretty darn close from the beginning of the road to uh, Mrs. Snyder's driveway. Uh, it's pretty darn close to six tenths of a mile. Okay. So how much of the ditching is that done? About how many feet? Uh, it's about 2,000 out of the t about 75%, 70, 75% is done. Is, is done. Is done. Okay. Yeah. And I know that David got a hold of Jeff Goodwin. David Langley had spoken about at the last Slapman's meeting about him grading it. And I know uh, David told me that this week um, he was doing winter sand for Shapley. So I don't know if it's going to take the whole week uh, and he had given David a flat price, but I didn't ask him what the price was. So Dave was going to get the price from Jeff of what it would cost to grade it, flatten it out, grade it out, grade it. But but the problem the problem is the the part that's not done. There is no really there's no material there to grade. I mean you, you got places where the roots are sticking up in the road. Uh, so the only way to successfully do it is you're gonna have to put some money into gravel because the worst part of the road wasn't done in reality Made about six thousand dollars over over six thousand dollars in gravel already well we need to bring more more in but really it shouldn't have been ditched in the first place over ditched uh, over did oh, well you don't ditch a flat road you crown it you bring material in and you grade it you don't re remove the material because then, of course, everything's going you to go right into your road. Goes off and you don't need to do yeah, you're bringing, you want your that. best roads are built above grade, mm -hmm. and the, and you want a half to three quarters of an inch of of grade from the middle of the road down, a nice crown, and then you have a sheet flow uh, instead of all the mess you've got down there. So, uh, my understanding was Chuck is. Seven thousand dollars that we had to uh, pay for the gravel and for the culverts. Oh, and the culverts. Yeah, yeah. and and we spent nineteen thousand seven hundred and some. Yeah, we so it, probably twenty five thousand on it already, and we have one estimate of another nine thousand. We're waiting for a second estimate to come in just to compare the two. So we're well, well over thirty thousand dollars to do this. The, the only the only trouble with that is there's no specs to do the road to begin with. Okay, when when Scott went down and did it, uh, he come up with about nine hundred feet left to do, and because he said there was two hundred feet in the beginning and then up farther, but. I'm not criticizing anybody for this, but nobody asked where the town's going to stop. So he came up with 900 feet, and the last part that the town didn't do is over a thousand, and plus the beginning. The 200 in the beginning. And and what Scott's price was, finishing the footage that he came up with, and then putting. Um, two or three inches of three quarter inch gravel the whole length of the road. So it, it would all depend on what the town wants to do. If they want to put the, basically the, the larger crushed rock to finish that section and then just leave it and do something another time or, or do the whole road. And that's what Scott was talking about, doing the whole road, grading it and three quarter inch gravel on the whole road. So even though, because he was talking 400 yards of crushed gravel, which, I mean, that's not unreasonable, but I don't know if we, I mean, it's so late in the year. I mean, the water froze in front of my place today in the cove, and it never thawed out all day. So you can put material down, but we're really running out of time to even do anything. And I'm not sure whatever, whoever the road commissioner is, uh, especially in the springtime, I don't know what kind of a problem he's going to have. I know it's going to be quite a problem. Yeah. Our big
biggest concern right now is just getting somebody to be able to snow plow it properly without them damaging their equipment. That's and they very well could easily on the upper part of the road because it really is. Um, and I don't know if just putting gravel down would really help that because they, if it was just loose gravel laying on top without being well, that's what properly th plowed, then. Well, that's what was done. I understand. What, that, what was already done. <laughs> and, what, and again, what would sound like what you're saying was that was what Scott was going to do for the 900 feet that he estimated was just going to put gravel down? Yes, and then three quarter inch over the whole road. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not sure that that's the right answer either, but. Uh, I, I guess that's what my point is. Scott went down and he saw what he thought should be done to the road. But there was more. And he gave us a price. So how do you, how do you get another price comparable without the same specs that I what agree. Scott did. I you understand. know what I mean? Yeah, I agree with you. So, I mean, you might be able to, if you didn't put the three quarter inch gravel on it, you know, it might drop the price down to $6,000. You, you know what I mean? If, and, and you do that, put a top on it another day, you know, just get it so you can plow it this winter. Mm -hmm. But I'm not trying to tell anybody what to do, but this is what I see in my experience on that road. Okay, So thank you. So one of the things we'll have to do is make sure that when we get an estimate from Jeff, we know exactly what he's going to do and we can compare it to what Scott's doing. And, mm -hmm. you know, if we have to do some adjustment percentage-wise of the length and all that, that uh, just to make sure they're comparable. Mm -hmm. um, one of the questions that we, ac we actually ask about um, the total cost to date of what we've actually spent on, which I think was the, around 19,000 that Dave had, plus we owed a vendor 6,300. Has money been allocated for that through the uh, board of selectmen? No, because we have to have a special town meeting. Okay, do you have one schedule for that? or Not until we get another estimate, because we, we want to have a good number. We don't want to go. No, I meant for the for the, what we owe the vendor, the 6,300. We can't do both? pay the vendor until we have a special town meeting. Okay, so you're gonna, the special town meeting is going to do both of them at one time? Yes. Okay. I, I might, you may want to check on the special town meeting because since it is now a town road, you may just be able to take money right out of the district too to take care of it. The first 20 had mm -hmm. to be allocated to flat ground from the warrant. I think somebody but already it doesn't, into it. But I don't believe it excludes you taking money out of the district too now that it's a town road rather than, you know, tie it up with doing another special town meeting. You might check again and ask. It would be a lot e faster and easier because time is in the, at the essence right yeah. now. Um, well, I don't know if it is a, I mean, it's not really a town road. It's not. Um, yeah, it kind of is. With it, what it, is, it was approved as a town road. Yeah, we approved in, that. Uh, over the, in the, uh, at the summer meeting, the budget meeting. It was approved as a town road. Yeah. Is that what the wording is or are we just in the contract to maintain it as a town road? Um, I believe we've accepted. What, Dennis? How about it? I, th I thought it was voted on as a town road. As a it's town road. To be road. accepted as a town it's road. It's got to be one or the other for the. And, for and at least as defense, I, and she will remember this very clearly, I asked many times. I said I didn't understand this agreement. And even though I signed it, I still didn't understand the. Exact terminology, you know. No, it was a turducken. I know. <laughs> no, I mean, maybe, maybe, so, maybe somebody could go back and look at that and 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 say yes. So you, when you voted yes, you you were accepting it as a town road. Yes, that's what I was doing too. Yeah, I, that's what I understood also. Okay, we'll have it looked at. <laughs> yeah, I, I think everybody thought that that it was yeah. coming and back into the fold. I, I um, really glad. Okay. And that's why we've been saying reporting it to the DOT as a town road so we could collect money on it. We've been saying that that's, for a Yeah, weeks this now. is it, because we can get the, the money if it is a town road. Otherwise, we're maintaining it for free as far as the state is concerned. So you'll have somebody look at that and 
let us know. Yes. Okay, thank you. We also talked about um, other roads, either being town roads or not being town roads according to what the state has. Cindy, can you give us an update on your conversations with Pete? Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Pete's coming down from the DOT local roads. Okay. And he'll go over the differences that we have from when we did our road inventory with our SMS, mm -hmm. we had conflicts with what is on the state map. Um, they still have us doing Horn Road, which we don't do at all. Mm -hmm. um, they don't have us doing the part of Hawk Road that we do. Mm -hmm. And they didn't have us, of course, doing flat, well, they didn't have us doing flat ground. However, 911 does have us doing flat ground. Ah. So, uh, and those maps need to, to coincide with one another. I don't know if you saw this, but when I got in touch with, uh, Pete sent me this email and I'll just read it so we know. Hi, Cindy, this report is only as good as the last town review by Lorraine back in November 2007, plus any changes since then that your 911 addressing officer may have submitted. Mm -hmm. I ought to come down and do a full review with town again. So he's going to be coming down in a couple of weeks when he's dealing with Sanford, and, this and we'll is go over. And for the LRAP? Yeah. Um, yes, this is Because I did, we, are they calling it LTAP now? <laughs> yeah, whatever they call it. <laughs> so it's LTAP. Um, I think it's local town. So when I did ask Jennifer, and she said that the road commissioners sit down with Michelle each year, and if there's no changes, there's nothing to report, is what I was told. Okay. Uh, but like yeah. if the road commissioners hasn't seen, they haven't seen, the, they don't know if they're not looking at the map. No, they don't if they're not looking at the map, and the only reason we know is because we did. Okay. So we just want to make it. So that but, well, everybody okay. so agrees on paper. He's going to call because he's coming down and coinciding us with Sanford, and it'll be sometime after Thanksgiving. Okay. Sometime around the in the beginning of December. Okay. He said it would take about an hour, and um, to get. I spoke to Dennis about where we are on flat ground, and uh, I want Scott to look at it so he'll definitely put down the line of, of what he maintains. Okay. I think what might be a, a good thing to get would be a list from Scott of what he thinks are town roads. Um, That's not going to happen. No. no. It won't. Well, then, then somehow we, somehow we need to coordinate. Somehow we need yeah. to coordinate with the with the road commissioners of what roads they plan on plowing and maintaining and be able to say to Pete it, from DOT that this is what we have as town roads and look at it from the 9911 perspective and from the state perspective and see where there's differences and if we're actually maintaining roads I'm, I'm assuming we think that they're town roads the state, the state should be looking at them as town roads also so we can get paid for it. And if we're out of sync with that, we're getting shortchanged. So the, 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 I agree with what you're saying, but there's a problem, okay? And I'm just going to mention this road here just briefly. I'm not going to hop on it. Buzzle Road, okay? Mm -hmm. We have documentation that says where that road stops, mm -hmm. okay? In the last four or five years, it's been, been decided that it stops shorter than what our documentation says. Okay, we have the deed. When the road was laid out. They're stopping at where the turnaround is? They're stopping at the fork. Buzzle Farm is down over the hill a ways where it flattens out there's a culvert there and there's a stone wall there. Where that stone wall is, the other side of that was Buzzle Farm. Wesley has this information and so does Sletman. Now that's on the north end of town. On the south end of town there's a the, the road commissioner a former road commissioner um, Huzzy Hill Road. The town is supposed to be maintaining the top of Huzzy Hill Road. Gordon King did it for 27 years. Then Bernard Yetton did it. 
Well, then all of a sudden, this isn't a town road. It is down to Russ Wiles' house. And it always has been. When they closed Huzzy Hill, they started at what's now Russ Wiles' house and down to the Hopper. So when you go in, in, in uh, the Peck Road, where the road goes like this up to Sue Sorvels, and it goes left down to Mahoney's place, because they bought Margaret Carmichael's place, which is down even farther than Russ's. But the last road commissioner says this isn't a town road, and he didn't do anything with it. So uh, the people that lived down there, they had to take and plow it. They even put a culvert in that needed to be changed uh, because the road commissioner wouldn't take care of it. And there's documentation to back this up. But the only way that you can really get this information is through records and people that have been here and know this information. Uh, that's one of, the, one of the big resources of getting information about roads. And they'll tell you is, is from the public, you know, the citizens, why things are like they are and, and how, the, how they got there. You know, Hawk Road, Leslie has this. Uh, the, the town meeting accepted that to Fred Wood's house. It's one-tenth of a mile. And that's right, that sharp turn when you go in the Hawk Road and it goes real sharp right, Fred had a trailer he put there. And that was in the 70s. Uh, so there is stuff, but when you're asking somebody that has been involved in this stuff for six years or eight years or ten years, um, Lorraine Yetton's gone and so have a lot of other people that know all this stuff. And people like me were all on borrowed time. And I don't know what the answer is for you guys. I, I appreciate what you're trying to do and you're really doing a good thing. But you're just gonna keep spinning your wheels. Uh, I gave Leslie a book there last week and she's been working so she hasn't read it all. But uh, there's a lot of information in there. There's a, some information, there's some more articles that are broke down. The years the town accepted some of these roads. Um, so it's a mess. Okay. Elise, do you know if the town administrator office has a has records broken down for roads? Just a you know, like a roads file kind of thing, to where yes. it could be a you know a source, and we could go back and look at this. And because if she's if there's things that are in warrants and that that aren't included in there, we should get them included so we have a single place to go to. Oh, I see. I'm not sure about the warrants, but I think that if there's ever been an issue on a road, she creates a file for the road, and whether it, you know it's a lawsuit or you know the last puzzle was a folder for puzzle and a folder for flat ground. Just roads that have and had it's issues. Like, like there's a road, a road file and it's broken down by individual roads? It depends on, no. It depends on if it's had an issue or not. Okay. Because it hasn't had an issue, there's probably not a file on it. Okay. Which well, is why I think, I think we, this is one reason I think we need to go to a department because there's no history. I agree. Roads, road work. There's no plan for future road work. But that book that I gave Leslie, there's a lot of information in there, Chuck. Okay. And there's more, more in that book his copy of the Warren articles and stuff like that. How, how far back does that go? Ooh, long ways. You mentioned the 70s. Does it go back to the 70s? Or? Oh yeah, it goes back for that. Okay. So maybe it's worth somebody going through and just making a list of all the roads and make notes about what the comments or the, the comments and, and final decisions were on those road and let's start to build some information and information base so that we have some files that we can go and look at this stuff and look it up in the future and determine whether roads are town roads or not so we can have meetings with the state and then decide what we should be doing because mm -hmm. two things are happening if we're if we're maintaining private roads we're not getting paid for it they're being treated as private we're, we're plowing them or maintaining them but the state has it a private road. 
then we're not getting paid for it from the state. Mm -hmm. And the opposite is true is that the, the town records show that there is a, it is a town road, but we're not maintaining it. Then that means that the homeowners and that and taxpayers are flipping the bill for getting the roads plowed, for getting the culverts fixed, and whatever other kind of work needs to be done. And wherever we, it doesn't matter where we stand now, we have to build a base and and start someplace. Otherwise, this is just going to continue to happen year after year after year. We need to, you know, it's unfortunate that we didn't start this 40 years ago, but we're here today and we need to start something. And I would suggest that you know, maybe we sit down with the town administrator and the road committee and just try and figure out, you know, in a work session, you know, what we actually have that we could put together and, and start this kind of a file. Whether we include it in the RSMS or whether we keep separate files of it, we, sh we should be doing something. Like I said, that book that I gave Leslie, there's a lot, a lot of research that was put together by a former road committee. Okay. And uh, a lot of answers in there that um, most people don't have. Okay. Sorry for keep interrupting here. Right. I just That's how we, we're going to learn about all this stuff. Well, I just wanted to add to what Dennis was saying. If there's not a file system, because there wasn't an issue on a road, is there not files that road commissioners, if you get a bill, for something, it has to be filed somewhere. I mean, filed in the war with the war, like the date of the warrants. I'm not talking so, about. I'm not talking about warrants. I'm talking about uh, somebody bought, you know, 25 yards of expenses. Expenses that should, that should be it, recorded someplace. It's not filed that way. I mean, I've, I've always felt it should be because that would create a road history. But it would create a road history. Yes. I don't think it's part of like Jennifer's. You know, it's not part of the administrator or the treasurer's job description. I think it would be part of a road. Well, I, I would, I, I would think it would be part of the town administrator's job to see that it's done by somebody, because taxpayers, on one hand, are going to maybe getting screwed, and on the other hand, the town could be getting screwed. And it seems like who's on first? Nobody knows. Mm -hmm. And there should be a record. And if we don't have records of where our money goes. We, we are in really bad shape. We do, but it's it's with the like when you pay the bills in the treasurer's office. If if I wanted to know, like I asked to have files pulled on um, Black Run Road for the last six months. Yep. And so they take all the warrants, and she has her um, assistant go through all the warrants. If it says flat ground, she pulls it. She photocopies it, and that's. And then you go through the town checkbook and. Everything that was paid, you pull those two. What do you mean? Is, isn't is <laughs> does the treasurer have All an electronic things. file of the expenses with some type of a description of what the expense is? Like, for example, let's just take these expenses that we're now incurring for um, for Oak Flat Ground Road. Okay, we know that there was a warrant for twenty thousand dollars put together for that. That's exactly what I mean. I'm going to say. But down. we have, but so that we have the warrant. But when the treasurer puts this information in, is she putting something down that says this is flat ground road, or no. is she just referring to it as a warrant it's number? D D two comes out of the D two, you know, maintenance account. Flat ground's not a good example because that's actually a specific specific account. Mm -hmm. So Young's Ridge Road, the ditching he did over there, would come out of summer maintenance. For D2. Okay. Yeah, with yeah, no, listed, with no. Okay, but yeah, then, no. then I think, again, what we need to do is sit down with the town administrator and maybe the treasurer should be there also, just so that we can do better tracking of where we're spending this money. If we spent well, five, if we, if we spent five thousand dollars to um, fix a road, let's just say Sam Page Road, we paid five thousand dollars to get that thing but fixed. But in my eyes, that looks that's to me it should be a highway department. Not a treasurer. But we don't have a job. highway department. And we don't have a full time treasurer to be doing that type of work to be, you know what I'm saying? But there yes, has I to, do. There has no, to be I some understand. Accountability. No, we so do. We oh, I know, I know there is. But and right now, I mean, like, if, if, if God forbid that there was a catastrophic incident on one of our roads and the town got sued, how would you, how would you be able to document how, how much you spent on that road 
have You'd to. have to pull a, eat the warrants and look so, up the roads. <laughs> there is, the, and this is why I wanted the RSMS, mm -hmm. because there's no history on the roads. And it's not up to the treasurer, I don't believe, to do that. She's part-time. She doesn't have enough time to do that. Okay, well, I, I think then the answer to the question is, and is that, and I'm not trying to get involved in things that aren't our business, but if you want the RSMS to track information about how much money we're spending on roads, then we need to start getting the details of the expenses that are coming through and, and associate that with a road in the RSMS so that we can look at it from a historical perspective. Yeah. And if the, if the treasurer can go, or, or somebody can go through the warrants for the last year and all the invoices for the last year and, and provide us with that information, we can break it down on a road by road basis, assuming that that information is on, the, on those, it's on and we can put it into the RSMS. What they put on their timesheets is accurate. Um, we have to start, even yes. if it's not accurate, at least we got something. Yeah, and, and to, to be honest, nobody's ever asked this stuff before. Okay. <laughs> nobody's well, asked to have this stuff, right? Am I right, Dennis? Not quite a few years. Yeah, so it makes sense, total sense to me to have it. Okay, so what, what steps this? do we need to take to get this process started? The selectmen have to do it. I understand that, but what do we as a road committee need to, to request? Do we need to request it from the selectmen that we need to start seeing copies of warrants that involve road work and copies of um, invoices that involve road work so that we can put that into the RSMS? Possibly. It, it could be. We, we, have to, we have to start someplace. I, I, I think what needs to be done, and this is through the selectmen's office, and if we go to a road department, or even if we don't go to a road department, the selectman needs to change the format on the way the, the payroll's done. Yeah. And that's the answer. And, and the road commissioners uh, will either have to do it or uh, you don't pay them, I guess. Uh, I mean, that, 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 it, because you can't, because Michelle can't. When, when, when the only information Michelle's going to give you is what is spent out of an account. Yeah. That's the only information she has, and what she does is, is when the slutmen sign the total warrant, that's what she pays whatever they they sign, and it's out of different accounts regardless of what department's in. But she has no documentation of where this money is being spent. Okay, and, and to me, that's a real problem. Yeah. Money's, if, if, we're, if the town is paying money out because they received an invoice from somebody and we don't know what it's for, that's an issue. And we need to start getting, we need, number one, we need to, to start as soon as possible to start getting better documentation when, when expenses are paid. And I'm, we're only talking about the roads, but I would almost say this across the board as a, as a taxpayer. We should know where money is being spent, and be able to track it, and be able to. I'd like to like to say, I want to go back to 2016 and know how much money I spent on Sand Page Road. Can't do that today. No. So the point is, we need to starting on January 1st of 2019. We need to start building that information so that we can have it in 21, 22, and go back and look at it. And the farther we can get that information back, if we can go back one year or two years from today, or the beginning of the year, the better off we're going to be. But something has to be done to change the way we're, we're doing this. Otherwise, we're just spinning our wheels. Yep. And I think this is what, you know, Elisa's goal has been uh, for a while now. And with this RSMS thing, you're exactly right, Chuck. All this stuff needs to be put in, because when you end up like we did this time with a resignation, and you're left high and dry. Um, then you got somebody like David Langley, which was kind enough to step in for a few weeks, but he's going and he's asking people like me questions on what about this, or where does this go, or, you know what I mean, and what you want, and you're right, and at least is right, you want to be able to punch a button on a computer, and you should be able to tell Anybody, the day they step in, this is what, what you got to do and where you got to go, and this is what you spent, and this is what you got left to spend. Well, 
what I what I would like to do is sit down with someone from the Board of Selectmen, the town administrator, the treasurer, and just see the, see the kind of documentation that you have so that we can figure out what's a better way of moving forward with it. And we can start to build some processes and procedures to be able to track it and put it into the RSMS. Because yeah. today it sounds like we don't have anything and the only way we're going to do it is to get everybody together in a room and say, this is what we need to do moving forward. Mm -hmm. And if it means developing a new form that the road commissioners have to fill out um, to go through their expenses, then that's what we need to do, and that should be part of their job. Because right now, it's obviously not working. Yeah. Okay. This is what the school's been doing for years, Jeff. The school's been doing this for 40 years anyway. And you can go back and you look wherever you spend any money, no matter where you spend it or what it was spent on. Okay. You know, and that's what we need to do is up here. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, we talked about the Garvin Road Eagle runoff um, and putting it some kind of a check dam or anything. Has anybody looked at that all or no? Um. Do we plan on doing anything before the spring on that? I, I mean, somebody tried to get Scott to do this last year and it didn't work. He said it was fine. I don't know how, who, who's going to get him to go back out there and have a <laughs> conversation again. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, maybe Leslie had better luck with a conversation with Scott, but um, who was the guy that was complaining? The resident. Um, Bud Moran yeah. was the one that he brought me up and showed me and marked the whole thing. Scott was convinced that, you know, I, I just don't know how you're going to get Scott back up there to do, to have that That's, conversation well, and do the work again. Okay. Well, this might be something that you want, we want Linda Shire or somebody to look at okay. where they were and then maybe go the DEP route with okay. it because it's definitely for the water. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we'll so take another. Do you want me to call Linda and? Yeah, see. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> try that route. But Thank to you. go through that process now as time rolls so slow, uh, time moves fast and things move a little slow, we're stuck with it the same way this spring. Unless oh. some people stop and does it now, and like Elise says, and then we just went, we've been going through this, and I haven't been, but she has. Mm -hmm. And that's the road commission is not. Well, what we, well, what we need to do is be able to get a road commissioner to go out there and look at it when the issue is actually occurring. Mm -hmm. So if Bud could let somebody know when it happens again, what we should be doing is calling the road commissioner or somebody from the Board of Selectmen mm -hmm. and somebody from the road committee to come out and look at it as a group so that everybody can see what the actual issue is and what is the potential for damage so that we can get this thing on the calendar to get it fixed if, if it is truly is a problem. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we just had a lot of rain. I don't know whether it's an issue right now or not. And I don't know whether, it, do you know this guy personally? Um, the guy who called you? Well, um, yeah, I've met him and I've been up there with him. Why don't, so, if you could um, give him but a I don't imagine we're going to have a problem there until spring. That'd and I, I agree guess. with you, but yeah. just in case, if you okay. could just let somebody know all right. Because uh, he probably thinks, I already reported this thing, nobody's done anything, you know, what else can I do kind of thing. Oh, Maybe yeah, and he's just... been out and marked it again a couple of times for us, too. There. The, uh, somewhere along the line, we've got to get it on a calendar to oh, get yeah. it evaluated. This is, going, and... this is going through two septic systems before it hits the lake, so this needs to be fixed. Yeah. Uh, no doubt. Okay. That's why Chuck is David Langley was asking last week. This is why we have to go to line item budgeting. Yeah. The only way we can move forward is just like you were talking. You list out your projects you want to do. This is the cost of the project. And this is the money we vote on, allocated. You don't give us a long sum of money. It's all broke down. And let the people decide where they want to do this stuff. This example you're talking about right now would have been done three years ago. If it had been broken out, that the, that the people would have said, "Of course, we want to fix that. Why mm -hmm. wouldn't?" And, and but the the slutmen are really I don't even know right the right words to use, but it's a 
constant fight. Yep. Okay, next item is um, Article 43, um, grant amounts. Did the board come to a conclusion yes. on how much those amounts were going to be? The cap was 3000 and we, you, the committee needs to review the documentation and make a vote that um, yeah. they want to move forward Yeah, with. we had two... Um, Two applications. One of them, uh, he, um, the work has not been done, and I did speak with him, um, and so he knows that. Um, so that, that'll be done in the spring, and he'll resubmit. The other one was Lake uh, Lakeside Drive, and his. Um, when did so Loop? Was it Loop? It was Loop Road. And did you? When did you speak with him last? I spoke with. I, actually, he came in this this evening. Oh, okay. Yeah, he threw away my. I emailed him. He threw it away because he didn't know who I was. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> <don't have> <laughs> so this was the work that was completed on um, Lakeside. And that w we reviewed that um, a couple of weeks ago. On the yeah, he did a real good job. So you went out and looked at it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you should have that at least. It was in the packet that um, yes, Jennifer I, emailed yeah, to yeah. both it's of us. It's on my email. I didn't print anything out though. Um, so we feel that this one has met all the obligations that they need to to get the three thousand dollar grant. And they've gone above and beyond. They've put a tremendous amount of money into that road. And I also think Buzzle should be re revisited. Right? We're going to have to revisit it. On, on the plowing and and maybe make it more. Well, there you have it. It's eighty dollars an hour for grading, <laughs> depending on how long. No, it he said eight hours grading. So yeah, so oh, eighty dollars yeah. Yeah, yeah. an hour. Yeah. Um. I guess less than you bet. Wait. Yeah. I like the way this is broken out with. Um, details maybe we should make that as a model for when we request the information in the future mm -hmm. uh, yeah I do like that I mean you have all the information that you could possibly want with the way he's broken it out yep, the length the amount of time for each equip piece of equipment yeah um, so you guys just need to make a vote um, I move that we approve it second for our lakeside drive all those in favor Aye. All right, That's so then um, I'll let the board know and I guess we'll send this to Michelle or um, do you, the, will the board do that? And this is our first one. I, I, I mean, the slot well. Yeah, we'll send it to the to Michelle, but I'm just wondering. Um, all right, you guys take minutes, so we'll know that it was passed by, by the committee mm -hmm. or accepted okay. by the and committee. you still have the package that yes. was submitted for that? Okay. And please, that format that you guys just looked at, you said you would like to lease. I'd like to see the road commissioners uh, presenting their well, weekly... That's what I'm saying, but moving forward, what you guys were talking about, you want to take that format, and that's a real good starting point. For future requests. Yeah. No. Agreed. That's why I... I okay. Uh, last item under road issues was the uh, paving of San Page and Newbridge. I'm sorry. I'm writing my notes. We had talked about paving San Page and Newbridge, um, and then we were concerned about the weather and whether it should be well, done this this time of the year or should we wait till spring yeah well it was the weather the culverts they're taking down some trees that are issues um i think he was going to take talk to fr carol to make it a little bit more plowable but not pave it i don't know how he's yeah, going to he was, yeah he was going to do basically like he did on the offer at least the worst holes okay he was just gonna uh cold patch or whatever shim them. okay and he did finish the san pedro yeah. And um, there was at least three culverts on Newbridge Road that needed to be changed because they were very poor condition. Um, so he, he didn't want he didn't want to put a hundred thousand dollars. David didn't uh, land it on a road. 
going to have to tear it up next year to change culverts, and this is why he said he'd recommend wait till spring and see what we got. Right. Unless something happened that I don't know about. So San Page was done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What I think, and that was done within the last week or two. That was done the last week of last last week. I think we we should make we should make note of that because of the the time of the year and the weather, so that we can monitor that road and see, you know, just how long it lasts. Um, I'm not sure how long uh, Carol kind of I don't want to say warranties, but you know, thinks that the road is going to last. Uh, we should monitor that a little bit and make sure we're not doing them too late in the year. Okay. Bridges and culverts. Um, first one is road bridge. We talked about guardrails. I really don't know where we're at with that. I know that um, nothing's been done. No, <laughs> I I feel like somebody was in the middle of ordering guardrails, and I don't know if they ever got ordered. Well, mainline fence was contacted. Yeah, but that was for Scott's three locations. I don't think road bridge is on there. It's not. But I'm saying this, we should have been looking for all the bridges at that one point. When it was requested when we had the road commissioner and he said he had his... He, he had said he was working on it. He was working on it. And then I thought when... And then it came that, that he wasn't working on it, so we had Scott try to hook it up with mainline. I don't know where it's at with that. Okay, well, main, the mainline so estimates does not have road bridge on it. Right. It only has Scott's. But that, Scott was going to mention it after he had already gotten his estimates, but I don't know if he did or not. So I have no idea where we are at with that. So we'll find that out. Um. <clears throat> and I guess should we ask, since Main Line Fence did this, should we ask them to go out and look at Roe Bridge to give us an idea for that too? Maybe they already have. I don't know. It was mentioned to go look at it. It, it was after that. <laughs> so don't keep looking at that thinking it's not on there. It was, they're not connected. I, that was way before. Okay, so would you want somebody from the road committee to get in touch with them to see well, if they I'm have I'm going to ask Jennifer because okay. she might know. Okay. She had helped Scott get connected with them. Okay. And then I didn't know if David Langley was brought into it or not? I don't, I don't believe he was. No? I don't okay. think there's been time to end it. I know, it's, it's too much going on to keep track of every thing. Well, that's what we're... But we're, somebody was supposed to be looking into it, and where the ball is now, I don't know. So I don't want to step on anybody's toes without finding out first. Okay. I think... My opinion is is that this is the kind of stuff that the road committee can help with if we need to collect information and get information from vendors or whatever you know we're more than happy to contact them or whatever but we need to have the you know somebody tell us that they want us to do it okay so if that's the case if road commissioners don't have the time to get information they can certainly let us know, and we'll try and assist them in getting that information from them. Okay. I'll let you know. Okay. I'll, I'll have to ask to have that put on the agenda for tomorrow night. Okay. Um, also, we provided the town administrator with information about um, getting appraisals on the road bridge as far as getting it looked at for a second for we had one estimate oh, yeah. and then we provided two two other companies plus the original company that submitted one we haven't heard anything back on that as to whether she received proposals from anybody or anybody okay we know that we had one but we wanted to make sure that everybody was looking at the same thing so we sent it back to them a second time okay but i haven't heard whether we've got any so any Responses to any of those three okay. requests. One was when sent to HEB. It, it was quite a while ago. Two, was it two to three weeks ago. Yeah. Was it before or the, after the last meeting we had? Um, I provided her the information before the last meeting. Okay. So the end of October then. Yes. It 
it was in October. So it's been three weeks. Yeah, that should be. She should have heard by from somebody. I hope. Yeah. Okay. That'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, concerning Canal Bridge, um, we had requested to get copies of the HEB. The town administrator uh, was going to contact the Wakefield town administrator. Yeah, she has a call into her, and I have a call and an email into her. Okay. So I'm waiting to, I guess she wasn't working today, Kelly. But mm -hmm. yeah, understandable. Um, I will tell you that um, I have talked to the state a little bit about it. The state is now requesting, they had originally requested $5 million for bridges and culverts to work. And the person that I talked to at the DEP said any stream crossing, whether it be a culvert, and in his opinion, and he's the person who evaluates the grants, could include a bridge. Oh. So um, what I wanted to do was get a copy of the engineering report from HEB <laughs> and once the grant request has gone out from the state and it hasn't been approved yet, that we take that report, that engineering report, and submit that to the state and see if they'll do some funding with it. Mm -hmm. And the state is going to be requiring, uh, moving forward, 50% from some other source. They're not going to pay the whole 100%. They're only going to pay 50. Mm -hmm. And the other 50 has to come from somebody. I'm hoping and I'm waiting for this, but I'm hoping that they would accept Wakefield paying the other 50% yeah. would be acceptable. Yeah. If they don't, then maybe the town would have to pay 50% and they would pay 50, or we could go to some other, um, like inland fishing, fisheries and, and wildlife, we could go to them and ask them for money because that is a, theoretically, the beginning of a river. Mm -hmm. And so we may be able to get some other money besides just from the DEP. But until we see all that information from Wakefield, mm -hmm. we're kind of at a standstill. Plus, the state, again, hasn't approved anything yet. And just to clarify, the state requested $5 million for uh, bridges and culverts. And when I looked at the current status of it, they're just looking to get $2 million approved for this year. Mm -hmm. So... It's not much money when you look at it from a state perspective, and it's going to be it's going to be evaluated, and they are only going to have it open for like two weeks or three weeks, mm -hmm. and so we're going to need to be able to jump at it very quickly. I mean, it could be get approved tomorrow for all we know, oh. and it could be tomorrow or it could be four months from now. We don't know the answer to that. The state doesn't know the answer to that. But we got it. We should be prepared, yeah. so that as soon as they get it approved, we can look at what their requirements are, attach the HEB engineering report to it, fill all, all the rest of the documentation out, and then send it to the state to get approval on it. Mm -hmm. And we could then say that uh, we have a, a town sharing the bridge, paying 50% of the expenses. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't even say it was in New Hampshire. You know, I'll check with them to see how we should word it, but. Yeah. I think we need to, to pursue that. And the same thing with all of these uh, culverts that we're looking at. When, when you're looking at uh, West Shore, H Road, Goose Pond, those are all things that we would like to be able to submit, but we need to have something to back it up, what it's going to cost. Mm -hmm. And the only way to get that is engineering reports. Yeah. So we need to... The first thing is to get the Wakefield report yeah. and then decide, I, I will have a call with them once I get that report. And one of the questions I was going to ask them is, can we request money to have an engineering report done rather than have the actual <coughs> construction done, do the engineering? don't know what their answer is going to be on that. But the engineering could be anywhere from ten dollars to $20,000 to evaluate these things. It would be nice if we could get them to cover half of that expense. And then when the construction comes along, you know, the, the other 50. But until we get moving on these things, yeah. uh, it's hard to know. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know that the state had done something with the Milton Mills um, Beaver Dam. They took 
I would say maybe one to two feet off the top of it and the water level actually went down quite a bit um, but I, we we're gonna try and do some trapping for the beaver Do you know yep. if, was that done or um, was so it, it successful no, it's, it's the state will contact him on that I'm sorry the state will contact him on that because it's a state road and normally the state contacts and this is what he told me and so as soon as the state contacts him uh, beaver trapping you can start right up here anyway I think it started last week. It started last week, but um, the state going through, I think it's the um, Department of Agriculture can actually request it non-seasonal, and, and the guy that we were talking to has a license to do it non-season. Right. So. But there was a time period there. There was a time period you can't do it even just the nuisance trap. I, I think it's probably mating season or something like you know that. Yeah. I mean? yeah. And, uh, but it was this fall. And uh, he, he said usually the state contacts him on that. And he'll be trapping beaver pretty soon anyway. So it hasn't opened already. Okay. I think it opened at the beginning of the month, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it used to be January 1st. I guess they had to be people falling through the ice or something. So they started it earlier. Yeah. Okay, uh, next thing was winter services. We talked about security at the um, sand and salt garage. Yeah, I think that's going to go on our agenda for tomorrow night. Okay. Oh, good. Good. And is, what, do you know, does that include cameras or what is that, or is it just no, we, a matter of locking? It's going to be on the agenda to discuss what it's going to entail. Okay. <laughs> But I think cameras are a good idea. Okay. Locks are good. Locks. Policy, you know, policy. Shut the light off, close the door, and lock it. And, and close <laughs> the gate. Close, close the gate. gate, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just like if you're leaving your home. Full yeah, kind of like what your mother equipment. taught you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we also provided a list of um, roads for turnaround easements. Yep. Um, We'll discuss it briefly, but I have a feeling they're going to say wait till spring, and I don't know why we didn't do it in April. I don't know why. I don't know why this is so hard. I don't either. <laughs> I don't think it should be difficult, no matter what time of year it is. No, but um, would, I would like to discuss the Buzzle Road one. I, I'm still not happy with what we're doing with Buzzle. I feel that last year, I, I think that we could have taken the plowing down farther. We're driving on a private road and turning around in a private driveway as is to do the little part of our road. And I just think that's the right thing to do to take care of people and go another half mile or whatever it is plowing it for them. They put a tremendous amount of money and work into their road. And uh, that's one of the few roads we had to turn around and on. Yeah. Well, we no. Do have one? No. We, we did. Ronnie oh, down the end. Yes, that we have a turnaround. Not where, not where they're turning around, but down the end where they turned around before. And the, they turn and the they pit. don't go there. That, they don't go that far anymore. No, but they should. He gave it. He gave yeah. it. Right. Yeah, I wish you would bring that up again. <laughs> we would bring that up again because that's just the right thing to do. Um, okay. And do you know if anyone had? Talk to the north, um, to Sanford or Shapley about the North Lebanon Road. We briefly discussed it, like right after our meeting, and it was talked about. You know, they get paid forty-five hundred dollars a mile to plow over there. But she said she was going to double check one more time, and hopefully we'll have an answer tomorrow. Okay. On whether or not, or what the person, because it's contracted, mm -hmm. what they would charge to have us do it. And then there was a question, possibly that there's another road over there so we're not just going the three miles to do that section is there something else over there that we're doing we no, we used to do Tattle Street okay, we so no longer do it okay. so, so it's, it's, it's simply that doing. small stretch of road which okay. is it's about a half a mile is it just under a mile yeah something like that it's, it's between a half and a full but it's three miles over there and three miles back right that's and there are two towns to talk to now David Langley may be talking to them also because he's familiar with it, and, mm -hmm. we, and we discussed it, so he may he works with with uh, Pete Smith over in both Sanford. Those, both those uh, towns are in Sanford. 
towns have contracted plowing now. Uh, well, then that makes it easier. It's just a little more money. Well, uh, If they're only charging $4,500 a mile, then $4,500 uh, a mile on the road. That's pretty good. That's pretty cheap. Now we paid over 8000 on our roads last year. Mm -hmm. I don't think Sanford's paying $4,500. Whoever's, whoever's, right now they have a con, the guy that con, is contracted in Shapley to do that road. up to the Acton line. Who's going to contact him and see what good charge, so good. Okay, we talked a little bit about processes and procedures for monitoring costs in RSMS. We talked about that again. I think we need to just get all parties involved sitting down at a, and discussing what's the right way to do this and how to get it into the system and all that kind of stuff. Um, we should probably set a date to, I mean, even just to have you come in and show me how to get into the system and where that sort of work would go. Okay. Um, I do want to, I do have all the RSMR. RSMS forms that we filled out. I would like to have the town have those so that the, you know for permanent rather than sitting oh, in. Put in a file cabinet. Yeah. Okay. And uh, we talked about budgets and cost to date and all that. Not only for you know flat ground road, but just in general. But again, I think that's all something we can talk about and how we how we monitor that going forward. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know whether the Board of Selectmen had a chance to talk about um, the homeowners uh, po po being able to post uh, road condition issues um, on the website. I happened to be looking at Wakefields today, and they have a they have a form, and I printed it off and forgot to bring it in. Um, is it something they would a homeowner would print off and mail in? Because I'm not sure who would answer the form on our. I don't think it's anything that has website. to be answered. I think it's something that has to be looked at, and I would assume somebody in town hall goes to the website almost every day or a couple times a week at least. They could check that area, print it out, print out what's there, and give it to the appropriate road commissioner to do something with it. And when they do that, when they do give it to the road commissioner, they should make a note of it that it was given to them on this date. And you know they yeah. sub quote submitted it to the road commissioner or whomever's mm -hmm. responsible for that area. Um, and, and we could and we should be able to track that again in a computer system, and be able to follow up on it and see know when it's completed, how much it costs, uh, who completed it, and then anything that is still outstanding, we should be able to pull right off and say to the appropriate people, what's going on with this pothole or shoulder or whatever the issue was. I'll mention it, but I, I just don't know how, honestly, our website uh, has, I mean, have you ever filled out a form on our website? No. It's kind of dated. <laughs> I don't think, you know what I'm saying? I've never um, heard anyone say anything good about your website. <laughs> who, who maintains the website? Jennifer does. She has a great tech job maintaining it. I just don't know how interactive it can be if, like, somebody were to go to it, fill out a well, form, and then there's, there's and there's actually, they there's ping actually, somewhere for Jennifer to see it ping. I mean, if it's a WordPress-based um, website, it's very easy to add a form. It's not WordPress. I think it's not WordPress. Yes, yeah, it's, it's probably it's older than that. The way it looks. Um, but but a form could be added to it. You just have to yes. get, and, and but I it think probably wouldn't be Jennifer who adds the form. It would be somebody who print it, fill it out, mail it in, or scan it and email it, or something. I think that the email would be the best route because she does check that way more often than seeing a, a ping somewhere on the we, website. We can't, we can't email the town website. No. no, but you could build a. You could have. You could actually fill out a form Definitely. and press a button and say submit, and it sends an email to the town administrator with all the information on it or a copy of the form or whatever. So I'm, at, I'm on Wakefield's website and their form is not interactive. You just print it out and then you just jump. print it. Yeah. And, and print it and mail it in. Yeah. Um, Again, this at this day and age, you should be able to fill it out and, and hit print and submit. 
just well, submit some I don't know how much it would cost to redo our website, that, but that, you're right. It there could be costly to do that, but we need to, we need to find out whether it's something we want to do and investigate it. If we if we do, if we don't want to do it, then just say we don't want to do it. And I think I can't tell who does their website. The, the the concern I have is that if if road commissioners are getting calls about problems on it's a road, recorded. we nobody knows about it except the road commissioner and the person who called them, mm -hmm. and they could, they could fix it or they could just forget about it and nobody knows. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden we have a taxpayer who's saying, yeah, I called so and so up about this problem three months ago and it's still an issue. Yeah. You know, what am I paying taxes for? So yeah, even if we got the form up that could be printed and mailed or dropped off or sure. even if they have capability of scanning and emailing it directly to Jennifer and the road commissioners, it's that in would, writing. That would be a good starting point. Yeah. But we'll so that's basically like you're doing now with the uh, money for the private roads. Right, there's a form on, on the town's yes. website that you have to follow and, and so basically that would be like the same type of thing. <clears throat> I promise this is the last time I'm going to say anything. Uh, I promised before and lied, but uh, what you guys are talking about and what Lisa's talking about is going to make a big impact in the town in the future. You're right, 100% right the way you want to do things. But all of this is going to hinge on what the Sletman do tomorrow night. Um, hopefully they're going to appoint a road commissioner because this is supposed to be David's language last week. He agreed to do it for three weeks. Whether or not the Slatman and the road committee decide to go to a road department. This a, a, a road commissioner that they uh, appoint, if they'll be willing to come in and work with the Slatman and work with the road committee and be part of the process, everything can move along for very well. What Elise has been up against, and the other selectmen, is that it's always a battle. And for you guys to say we want to change the format, the way we're doing things, uh, I can see the look on Elise's face, uh, the ramifications the first time some people are told they have to do this. It's, it's been terrible. And forward we really need to make a decision on how we're going to do this otherwise you guys are just wasting your time <coughs> well, I think that's what we're trying to say right now is we need to sit down evaluate what the current processes are and determine what's necessary for the town to move forward I'm not worried about what's happened in the past it's no, no I agree but we need to, to start setting up some guidelines on how we want to move forward and I think it's up it's up to the Board of Selectmen to say this is the way you have to do it, whether that's with someone that's running a road department within the town, which would be a lot easier, or if it's with road commissioners. Now, even an appointed road commissioner reports to the selectmen, so they're going to have to do it, but you still have a road commissioner who is kind of on their own in an elected position. Mm -hmm. So it's just going to have to be part of, at some point, it's going to have to be part of the job requirements that this is how we're going to do it. Right. And if the person, if it's an elected position, the person's going to have to adhere to whatever the guidelines are for that position. And if it means making changes, we have to make the changes. The, the Board of Selectmen have to make the changes. Right. It would be the time to do the changes if, you know, d depending on which way we go, if, if, we, if the town doesn't want a department, they want to keep the road commissioners, we should get these policies in place before the next election. Right. Next election. Because then when the person depends on what you do, like I say, to, to take over for David Langley. You can work with that person and say, this is what we're going to want and this is how we want to do things. It's a lot harder with the other one 
but if they know this, if we stay to elected positions, if they know this before they run for office, this is how we're going to do business, then that's a decision they made and that's part of the agreement. And like you said, Chuck, if you don't learn by history, it sure as heck going to repeat itself. And, and it, I mean, it, it's coming out like this is the way we want it as selectmen, but it really isn't how we want it. It's how it should be. That's right. Um, so that people can come in and say, oh, when was the last time, um, you know, Hawk Road was paved? Because that's a mess right now, I think. Yeah. Um, and we, yeah, you know, I don't know. But let's pull all the warrants until we see Hawk Road. Let's call Dennis. <laughs> no, but I mean, no, but as a former selectman, yeah. I, can, I can really sympathize with Elise on, on some of the uh, trials and tribulations to try to accomplish something, and especially when you don't have the right people that's in the positions willing to work with you uh, in the road committee. Uh, just because of gossip, uh, has a bad reputation. They're trying to run everything. They don't understand what the road committee is trying to do is to help run everything. So everybody understands what's going on and where we are and why are we paving the Harper Road uh, this year or next year or we have it a five-year plan. This is why, because in the third year we decided we're going to pave it and let the people decide. But there's none of that, and you can't get any of that money you want, Chuck until we have this stuff. Yep. And and time's moving fast. I mean, it's uh, almost Thanksgiving. And it sounds like they're going to be plowing probably before the end of the week. So, uh, and the budget start another two months. Okay. Well, sounds like we have a lot to do, a lot to accomplish. Um, At least does. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Well, we'll, we'll schedule a meeting <laughs> for we're, you know, issuing the, the first Article 43 yes. um, monies. So we got one through, and now we know, I think we have the process down, right? Should somebody write that yeah. down? Yeah. <laughs> Successful. Yeah. Successful. Okay. Thank you very much. Meeting adjourned.